tuning in. This is episode number 177 of the Mile High Show. I, I, I have a... I have a fear we're kind of turning into a little weather podcast. Last week's intro featured uh, uh, lots of noise from the rain that was falling on my tin roof in my garage. And uh, and it's not raining anymore here. But this is what you might hear over the mic during this intro. No, I'm not standing in a wind tunnel. That is the fan blowing on me. In this 90-some-odd, 95-degree weather in Chino Valley, Arizona. I am in my office getting this uh, podcast ready to go and doing this intro. And uh, it's hot, so I'm blowing a fan on me. Now, uh, you will hear lots of people complain and say uh, ambient noise is not appropriate for a podcast. You should be in a sterile studio environment. You shouldn't hear things like fans or air conditioners or background noise, people talking, lip noise, mouth noise that you constantly hear from me. So I... Yeah, there we go, right there. I um, br- do not follow those rules because I am not uh, that talented to give you that rich, deep NPR type sound in the studio because I don't record in studios. I record out on location in noisy environments because I like our listeners to feel like they sat down at the table right next to me and my guests and joined in the conversation and had a good time and and uh, you know saddled up next to us at the bar or at the at the bench whatever and that's what you get when you listen to the Mile High Show. Hopefully, what you're getting is in, in you know informative and and interesting conversation, like you will get today with this week's guests, the backbone of the front page blues band, Mr. Kevin Skeevel, Freddie Freeman, and Bill Ray. Uh, but Kevin and Bill have both been on guests of this show in the past. Freddie Freeman has not, but I enjoyed talking to all three of them, and we recorded in the very windy and very noisy patio at Mark's Beer Garden a week or so ago. Mark's Beer Garden on uh, Swenson Street in Prescott, Arizona. You can find out information about Mark's Beer Garden at facebook.com slash pg slash Mark's Beer Garden. Just go to your Facebook thing and plug in Mark's Beer Garden and it'll pop up. 1590 Swenson Street, if you are from the Prescott area or frequent here, you may recognize that address off of Iron Springs as the old Black Hole Brewery Company or uh, Addictions Brewing. Now it is Mark's Beer Garden. It's changed hands a few times over the last few years, but it has always been a thriving place and a great place for for food and beverage and music. So uh, Front Page Blues was about to take the stage. We sat down for a half hour or so out in the patio. So thank you to the management at Mark's for letting us take up space in the beer garden. Uh, again, Mark's Beer Garden, 1590 Swenson Street, 928-515-1044 for info. Follow them on Facebook so you can know who's playing there. And follow Front Page Blues. Just Slap in front page on uh, on Facebook, and you'll find find the guys. They are playing in and around Prescott all over the place, including uh, the Eagles Nest Lounge at Yavapai Casino. They're there like twice a month, every other Saturday or something like that. Um, so follow them. And, uh, and uh, go to milehighshow.com. You can find episodes with this week's guest, Bill Ray, when he was with, uh, when he was with uh, uh, Five in the Wheel. He's now the bass player at at Front Page. You can find my talk with Kevin Skeevel from a couple of years ago. Uh, you can find information on all of our old shows as well as an Amazon link. You click that link, shop away like you normally do. It takes you right to your Amazon login page. And it tells Amazon you got to them through us. And guess what? They give us a little something-something at the end of the month. doesn't cost you anything extra. And it's a great way for you to support the show. And in turn, support the artists and entertainers that we support. So use that Amazon link at milehighshow.com. Just click it, shop away, and uh, with no effort on your part, you're, you're helping us out. A um, couple little updates. Again, it is so hot out here, especially in this little office where there's no, no window, no air conditioning, just this little fan blown on me. So I apologize again for that noise, but you're going to hear it. You also might hear... Hear me open my mail, because while I'm doing this, I'm checking my mail. What is it about making a purchase of any kind 
that puts you on every single mailing list in the world. Uh, some of you may know we, we recently bought the, uh, the home that we had been renting and living in for the past four years. And that purchase put us on every single insurance and mortgage uh, mailing list in the world. We get stacks of mail now. Guess what? You know what? Stop mailing us stuff and you, your customers' rates can go way down. How's that? How's that for brains? So in addition to the fan, you might hear this. That's me shredding my mail. Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, no, don't want that either. No, don't want this network. Oh, coupons. Maybe I'll keep those. Um, a couple of updates on uh, on some information we gave you last week there in our intro. Sky Conwell, if you recall, was robbed. Uh, Sky Daddy Conwell, lead man of 99 Years Band, the Johnny Cash, tri- Johnny Cash Tribute Band, uh, former guest and guest host of this very podcast, Mile High Show, and uh, also solo artist and frontman for Sky Daddy and the Pop Rocks. Uh, his truck was broken into, and somebody stole all of his gear out of the back, including his PA system, a bunch of cords and stands and all kinds of stuff, mics. Uh, first off, again, thanks to everybody in the in the local community who came to Sky's support and offered up goods and services and, and equipment that he could use so he can continue to go to work, even though he got robbed. Uh, he attended the court date, uh, again, with some fans, joined him in the courtroom, and evidently the guy get off with a plea. plea he pled out and was released that day and got a little slap on the wrist, and as Sky mentioned on a Facebook post, he is now free to rob me again, which we hope will not happen, of course. But uh, Sky is getting all of his gear back. So, uh, again, thanks to everyone out there who offered support to Sky. In particular, yes, we don't want his head getting too big, but uh, not Leslie Earl Lyman, but Leslie's hair was a big help. Leslie's hair was the hero. Never forget. Never forget Leslie Earl Lyman's hair and the heroic deeds that those uh, salt and pepper locks have uh, have done for the artists in this area. Also, uh, former guest of the show and friend of mine, Mr. Darren Mahoney, one half of the Second Chance Acoustic Duo, is recuperating from two surgeries, and he is doing well. We've traded some messages. He went in a couple of weeks ago, got, uh, I forget which side, right or left, but he had uh, wrist surgery done for carpal tunnel. And then the following week, which was just now a couple days ago, went in and got the other one done. So he will be at a commission for a while, but he is recuperating well at home. And uh, I believe Second Chance's next uh, next uh, gig will be sometime in the first week of August over at Big Daddy E's Barbecue, uh, taking over the Tiny Mighty stage. And then they've got some other things coming up, Elgato Azul and Prescott. And some other gigs and uh, lots of stuff going on. So we wish Darren the best. We wish uh, Sky could get a bigger lock for the back of his truck. And uh, and we wish that you will enjoy this podcast. Again, Front Page Blues Band, Freddie Freeman, Bill Ray, and Kevin Skeevil. From the patio at Mark's Beer Garden, thank you to the good folks at Mark's Beer Garden for, uh, for letting us take up space there. Oh, and don't forget, um, check us out. Uh, not just us, but uh, independent podcasts from all over the country at podcastradionetwork.net. That is an FM band, uh, 10, what are they, 1029 out of Brooklyn, New York, as well as uh, at, on, on the web at podcastradionetwork.net. Also on, IT, uh, on TuneIn Radio, the TuneIn Radio app. Uh, they rebroadcast our shows each and every Sunday at 8 p.m. New York time, 5 p.m. Arizona time, as well as a full 24-7 lineup of independent podcasts from around the country. Check them out, please, at the podcast radio network dot net. And uh, thank you, the good folks over there for supporting us oh, the last few years as they have. So. Um, what else is out there? Nothing. Just enjoy the show. Oh, I don't know what this week will be like. We're going to try and get a couple of shows in or at least one, but we do have, uh, some folks visiting us. They're on their way, probably right around maybe Kingman now, I think coming in from the San Francisco Bay area. My in-laws are on the way. And so we're going to have a house full of, of, uh, 
brothers and sisters in law and nieces and nephews and uh and it'll be a lot of fun for uh It'll be a lot of fun for somebody. I'm not sure. No, I'm just kidding. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we don't get a chance to see him that often. So to the uh, the Fitch and Murphy families that are on their way in, we hope to see them shortly in the next couple hours. And my son, the boss of this house, Anthony, is going to enjoy a full week of his summer vacation spent with the cousins. So I'm not sure what we're going to get in, but uh, we'll try and get a podcast done or... Uh, so, oh, and next week in a Blues Alliance, this coming Saturday, if you are in uh, the Prescott area, the Northern Arizona Blues Alliance, N-A-Z-B-A dot com, will be hosting their first ever Blues Festival at Watson Lake in Prescott from noon to five, a free event at Watson Lake in Prescott this coming Saturday, June 30th, from noon to uh, 5 p.m. It's going to be a lot of fun. I will be out there. Uh, uh, Christian, uh, uh, Chris Berry and uh, Scott O'Neill will be kind of heading it. I'll be up on stage with them for a little bit, helping them host it. But it will be a lot of fun. June 30th, Watson Lake, from noon on at, uh, at Watson Lake, the Northern Arizona Blues Alliance Blues Festival. Come check them out. And uh, in the meantime, enjoy my conversation from Mark's Beer Garden with the good folks from Front Page Blues, Kevin Skeevil, Freddie Freeman, and Bill Ray. Here they are. Yeah, you filthy, filthy. That's All right, Kevin. So what's hey, going on, man? How's it going, Matt? I'm doing good. Doing good. Now, how much time did you get last night over at uh, at Jersey Lily's? That's I where like I saw you last. Yeah, I did. You didn't play? No. Nah. Too many people line up there. It's great, which is great. It was. It's nice, but, yeah, you know. I was surprised to see the country players there. <laughs> it's always been a rock jam. They're, they're kind of flipping it up. That's what I was talking with, yeah. uh, talking with Glenn last night. We did a podcast last night. And just because... There's so many folks out and about playing, uh, and you know we we've talked about this before on our uh, you know when you you were one of my first guests, right? Uh, often, what people Three find fingers. in what oftentimes people find, especially in the open mic scene in Prescott, is it's kind of clicky, which is okay, which is good because you get really get the cream of the crop playing, right? But there are certain venues, certain nights where. Unless you're in that crowd, you don't get on. You don't right. get in. Right. And I think that's kind of what Glenn's doing. Is like, kind of like, you know what? This is. It's not necessarily country. It's not classic rock like it had been. Um, it's just kind of show up and play. You know, get here and, and have a good time. That's the vibe I got from when we were talking yesterday. Right. And uh, which which is great because you get such a good mix of musicians, but not so great if you're looking for mic time and stage time because sure. you still have to get on. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So how you, we're going to get into front page blues, yes. obviously, Kevin, and I'm going to butcher it again. Pronounce your last yeah, name. Skavel. Skavel. Yeah. I've I think I've always gone with Skavel. Skavel like yeah. Skavel. Skavel. Freddie, you got to get right in on there. Skavel right like Navel. Yeah, Freddie, right. introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Freddie. How'd you hook up with these pirates? Well, I was singing at the Birdcage with uh, Chuck Hall. Yeah, and, yeah, that's right. And Kevin came up and gave me his card. Said, "Hey, you want to jam with us at Far From Folsom?" Nice. I said, yeah, okay, you yeah. know, that good, and that's the way it started. Now, the first time I saw you play was at, yeah, get in there nice close, and close. close you got to get in really close. The first time I saw you on stage, uh, I, I'm trying to think if you were playing keyboards or just singing. I don't remember. Just singing. But it was uh, <laughs> it was on Sky's open mic at the Birdcage that he used to run there on that's Wednesdays right. a couple years ago. That's right. And maybe that might have been the night, because I think that was when, he, when Sky used to... Do part of this show, he would we p- periodically he would host it and interview somebody. And I think that might have been when he interviewed Chuck Hall. Was that same night? That's right, absolutely. Was uh, there another guy? Do you remember? I don't know if you remember that. Was there a guy up there also with a keyboard? Yeah, I used playing, his keyboard. Yeah, he was uh, playing Pink Panther riffs. And yes, stuff. he was. Yes, Henry he was. Mancini stuff. You got a great memory, well, no, man. You, one of the reasons why is because you blew me away when you went up. No, oh. and it was kind of like an all star jam. It was, it was Sky typically ran it as just a general open mic, and for yeah. that yeah. night, the whole place was jam packed with 
great players. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. everybody went up. Because usually it was like somebody would go up, do a couple songs, come off, go up, come off, go up, come off, like a general open mic. But towards the end, it was an all-star jam up there, and everybody took the stage. Yeah, Tim King was up there, too, the guitar. Yes, yeah, that's Tim right. Tim King that's was right. up there with Chuck. And we had a great time. That was know? nice, man. That was a good time. Good yeah. night. Tim King yeah. is a great guitar player. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. the first time I had saw you play and, and saw you sing. We'll get there, Freddie. Freddie, your last name? Freeman. Freddie Freeman. Now, yeah. Bill. Bill Reyes. Bill on mic number one there. We have okay. crossed paths before. Yes, yes. We, you have played either officially or unofficially with pretty much every musician in this area at some point. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. N- name off some of the places that, that oh, people gee. may have seen you play. Prim- pr- pretty much all bass, well, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was a lead guitar player back in L.A. Yeah. 50 years ago. I, I when you when you were story. five. <laughs> when I was... No, you were five I'm, years old yeah, playing I'm, in a band. I'm 69. <laughs> Come on. Now. I'm 69. 50 years ago, when I was working in Hollywood at a place called Gazari's, this guy was playing there too, so this is like you a, were three. Oh, Freddie I was, was three. Not. <laughs> yeah, she was. He was forty three then. I'm really old, you know? man. But I saw him on TV playing with these guys, and I said, "Hey, you know, I, I got to get a hold of him because he he was in a group called TC Atlantic. Yeah. Great group, great group. Uh, we never played at Gazari's at the same time. When I left, his band replaced mine. I was there for two years. Now, what band were you with? Oh, that was uh, the profits. The profits. What were you guys playing? Is it money? Not profits, no. money, but profits. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, oh, Bibles. you were. What were you guys playing? What kind of music? Oh, rock and roll. Rock. Like, yeah, what, what, okay. What year were we talking? You're, t- you're saying six? Well, I don't know. I played there a lot of years in the sixties, seventies, sixties through the sixties and seventies. That yeah. was that home base for you. Is that yeah. where you grew up, Southern Cal. Yeah. What yeah. Nineteen sixty nine. What was home life? For you, a lot of kids, musical family, or were you well, the rock I was, and roll rebel? I was the rock and roll rebel. You know, I heard the Beatles in '62, and I said, "I want to be a guitar player." Uh, That's was what it the music it. or the girls? Probably both. <laughs> Probably both. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, that's that's uh, what happened, and then I ran into this guy, yeah. and uh, we know we headed off. You oh, know. nice. Yeah, we're lovers now. No, we're not. <laughs> oh, wait a no, minute. We're, no, <laughs> what were Start you? Start bad rumors. <laughs> no, that's what Facebook. No, that's a for. good rumor, actually. That's but, what Facebook's for. But I played with all the groups around here too. I, yeah, you know, I played with. Well, let's well, dr- let's Sky drop Daddy back. And, let's drop back a little bit. Back to yeah. back to Southern Cal. Your kid growing up. Um, mom and dad into music. No. What were you, siblings? No, I just no. It was, it was just me, solo kid. Yeah, lone kid. A lone kid wanting to be a, a Beatle. Yeah, is that what you were listening to? You watched that British to. I loved the Beatles in? when they first came yeah. out. What grabbed you about them? Oh, that that whole English sound. Yeah, you know that's that's what I wanted to play. I that. mean, they they they. What what's that old? Uh, the haircuts. And I don't know who I don't know who <laughs> it's credited to, but there's that quote about uh, you know. Thank the English invasion for introducing America to their own music, you know, yeah. by the Back old the blues, blues and things like yeah. that. What, were you already ingrained into uh, into blues music, or was that kind of your, your baptism that's into that? What, that's what got me into yeah. it. What I learned later on is that a lot of the stuff the Beatles played was stuff that they got from here. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. So, so they it, brought us back our own, our own yeah, heritage. But they kinda. just had their own little flavor added yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Do you, yeah. you remember the first Beatles song you saw or you heard? I, I want to hold your hand. Was it on the radio or was it on Ed Sullivan? Su- Ed Sullivan. Okay. Well, I, it, let, let me rack your yeah. your sixty nine year old brain. Okay. How old were you in sixty <laughs> two? Sixty two. I was. Well, I was born keep in forty nine. Keep that in there. Forty nine. I was born in forty nine. So what does that make? Thirteen. You could tell he's a bass yeah. player. He doesn't yeah, know how to hold a mic. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how? I'm sorry. How old were you? Thirteen. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. So, 13. so yeah. you're 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 an adolescent kid. Yeah. Thirteen years old. You're watching, you know, plate jugglers and who is that other guy, Popo Gigio, and, yeah. and then the Beatles <laughs> jump on screen. Yeah, what what was going through your head? What all the screaming girls? Yeah. I said, I want to be, I want to be like them. Thirteen year old, yeah, <laughs> women. Yeah. So when did, were you playing music at the time? Or was well, you, actually, uh, that's when I started. Yeah, you know, and then I started working for people like Casey Kasem and oh, Dave wow. Hall. Uh, the DJs, I started yeah. working for them. What were you doing? Being a musician, playing in a band. Oh, not like for their live shows and yeah, stuff. For their live shows, they yeah. would have, you know, they they were on KRLA and all yeah, that. Yeah, Which this was before there was even FM. 
<laughs> so, but they used to have throw dances, and then they yeah. we were the house band. Then they'd bring up a band like say the Doors. Yeah, you know they weren't famous yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They would come up, play, plug into our amps, play for one hour, <laughs> and leave, and then we would go back to playing again. <laughs> well, we played with a lot of famous the Doors. Yeah, uh, we played with. Uh, Jeez, you're, you're everybody racking, through, yeah. Everybody, yeah. All the the one hit wonders, all those kind of groups. All right, let's. And you probably know that that movie is that Tom Hanks movie. That thing you do, yeah. You, how how what, was that kind of the thing? Like the fair. I circuit thought that stuff? was very realistic. Did it? Okay, good, good. I'm glad to hear yeah. that because I love that movie yeah, and that it's that great it's a little bit before what we're talking about, but but that same kind yeah. of. Oh, feel. we had one time we were all dressed up in our double breasted coats yeah. and. In our little beetle haircuts, and we got out there, and we were playing in a place called Simi Valley. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which w- Copland. <laughs> it was actually uh, out by Spawn Ranch. Have yeah. you ever heard of that yeah. back in the no, old no, days? No. Simi Valley is like the highest concentration of, of PD living in a town. <laughs> yes, yeah. It is. Yeah, it's I Copland. Don't see, I don't yeah, anyway, that. we got out there, and we're playing away, playing our instruments, and we go to take a break, and we come out, and... Uh, and uh, Dave, uh, Dave Hall was oh no, was it Dave Hall? I forgot. Anyway, uh, they said, "Hey, that some there's some people who want to meet you." So at that time, I go to the door to get a soda. Open the door, and there's a mob of girls, <laughs> hands coming at us. And I go, "Oh my God, what is this?" And they're and they're yelling, "I want to meet you! I want to meet you!" And when you have that many girls tugging on your suit. It's like wrestling a bear. That's why Kevin got into music, but unfortunately, he only did it like five years ago. Yeah, so. yeah, I miss the girls. <laughs> but that was fun. We had a fan club for months. They were sending us letters. And were you playing bass at the time or guitar? No, I was a guitar player. Guitarist. I didn't start bass till I came here. Really? Yeah. We'll get to what brought you here and how you ended up here. Okay. I want to cut now, Freddie. Tell us a little bit about your your. Uh, well, I guess kindergarten days playing with this old man. Well, my first gig in uh, Hollywood was at the Whiskey A Go Go, ah. opening up for Little Richard. And when we played there, uh, TC Atlantic was the name of the band. The Doors were there. Yeah, the Stones were that there. Was kind of, the, the Doors, that was, Whiskey was like their home club, right? Exactly. Yeah. And uh, Stones, Rolling Stones were there. They they were all there to see Little Richard, you know. Yeah. So uh, again, well, the the root music that they brought over yeah, from exactly from uh, yeah. from the UK. So we're looking out there, going, "Oh my God!" <laughs> <laughs> now, what were you doing in the band? Were you lead vocals? What were you I, keyboard? I was, with? Yeah. I was singing uh, lead vocals. You front and man playing the Hammond organ with the Leslie yeah. speakers. Oh, oh, nice! So that was great. You know, it was great. And then after that gig. We went to Gazzari's, where everybody went, and Bill Gazzari kept all the bands alive at that time, you know? What do you uh, mean? Explain that. Wait. Well, there he wasn't kept a... kept us from starving to death. Okay, yeah. well, so Gazzari's a venue, restaurant venue? Yeah. I know the name, and it's for, probably from documentaries and stuff, but it, I can't Gazzari's it. was right down the street, like a block away from the whiskey. Yeah. And um, Bill Gazzari would take all us guys... And keep us living, you know? That's yeah. right. You know, we didn't make a lot of money. Let you get from gig to gig. Kept, he kept us alive, you know? Yeah. And uh, when I was playing at Gazzari's one time, Van Halen came in and auditioned. <laughs> I was just like 77, <laughs> something like yeah, that. Yeah, about yeah. 77. And uh, we go, you know, that guitar player is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Hey, these know. kids are all right. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about the lead singer, but... Uh, <laughs> But well, it was great. I mean, you know, it was a great time and lots of great music. Bill, Bill and Fred, Freddie, when you guys were coming up, you're saying you were playing with these guys and, 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 and in the same lineups and stuff who later became big. Was there anybody that right off the bat, as soon as you saw them plug in, you go, these guys are it? And the flip side of that, was there anybody that hit big and you said, I, I, I never would have guessed that? Redbone. Uh, Redbone. Oh, you Redbone, huh? They used to, uh, they used to be at Gazzari's a lot. And uh, Pat and Lolly Vegas. Pat and, and Lolly Vegas. That was a real, yeah, yeah. real non Indian names. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> really. And they, they had Come and Get Your Love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A big hit, you know? So we used to run into them all the time. So you knew they were they were going to make it. Oh just yeah! By After the that, sheer talent. they came up, and of course Van Halen. Yeah, they came out with "You Really Got Me." Yeah, yeah. And we went, "Oh my God!" Anybody know? that hit big that you that were struggling in the beginning that you just looked at and said, "Guys, hang it up." 
Anybody's <laughs> I got a, I got a story for you. I was I came in on a on a Saturday afternoon and Bill was he had a camera. He would film everybody. Yeah, he would. No, we're and, uh, no, we're good. Yeah, he would film everybody. Well, anyway, uh, he goes, oh, you know, he had that kind of a yeah. voice, Italian, you know, yeah, cigarette smoking kind of voice. And he told me, said, you know, I had one band came up here. On Thursday nights, I think they had, that was audition night, wasn't it? Yeah. They had, exactly. uh, they would audition bands. And he goes, uh, I had one band come up here. They auditioned three times. And the third time I hired him because I felt sorry for him. <laughs> who he goes, it? who was it? The Doors. <laughs> <laughs> this is a true story. After that, they went to, to uh, the whiskey and they became famous. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they were really not your typical. I mean, obviously, in hindsight, you go, oh, no, they were rock stars. But no. poetic, yeah. their 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 lyrics were not poppy. They weren't the you know three chords, boom boom boom. No. Yeah. These no. guys were pretty deep. And then you know, obviously, forty years later, you look and go, oh, it was profound. It was this. It was that. And the way they did crowds and things like that. But they were not your typical. They, they definitely they weren't the Beatles. You know, no, no, they weren't no, poppy. No, yeah. they were interesting. Deep, all right. interesting. I appreciate them now more than yeah. I ever yeah. did. Oh, yeah. then. You know, so Kevin, you yeah. have like we talked. You like I had mentioned, you were we launched this show in 2014, late 2014. You and I sat down early 15. It was like the first few months, I think. Yeah, um, you were just kind of starting to play around and get around and hitting some of the open mics and stuff. What was the evolution of front page? Because you you this is pretty much your yeah 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 you I did this spearheaded the project yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well you know I. Um, as you know, I learned out of the blue yeah. that I had a harmonica. I think it was about 2008, yeah. seven actually, uh, May, and um, sat in with a bunch of bands for years yeah. and years and years. And a couple of years ago, um, I finally decided that if I really wanted to get some good heavy play time, I yeah. just needed to start my own band. Yeah. So I started advertising on Craigslist looking for players and did that for quite some time without much response. Um, Bob, Bob Tenser, our lead guitar player, had just moved up from the Valley, and he had been playing with a couple bands down there yeah. from Pittsburgh area originally and has been playing for a zillion years also. And he just so, called so we old. got Yeah. <laughs> you like so, so we got together and um, decided we were going to start a blues band. Now, why would you pick the name? Uh, you know, it just came to me. Seriously, it just okay. It, it just, is good. I, I I just one day it just came to me front page, and I thought front page blues man, I like it. I assumed because you're I don't know is it still active the, the oh, newspaper watch? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I assumed because it was no, kind of right around no that time. Connection. It just really it just I just to, to it, recap. Let let's. Uh, Touch a little bit of that. Go yeah. back in the archives, MileHighShow.com, yeah. and you can pull up Kevin's sure. original show. But you were on, you were pretty much a one-man watchdog for local media, and the way it covered things like specifically Prescott Chamber of Commerce and and small business, merchant-related issues, yeah, yeah downtown because, merchant-related issues. Because, I, was, I was a merchant advocate yeah. of sorts. Yeah. yeah, for for various reasons. I encourage people to go back, listen to that episode because we course. got into a little more. Right. But in a nutshell. Um, the way that a lot of the powers that be in this area were courting outside businesses were really hurting, in your opinion, and the way a lot of people saw it, sure. was really hurting some of our local businesses. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. And more and, so back then with the, when the economy was down. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was um, very um, pronounced, more yeah. so than you see it now. And you were running, what was the page? Um, the Daily Courier Watch. Yeah. Yeah, helping you unravel the, the, the hidden truths behind the, the having, reporting. Having worked for the company for about eight years, it was as close to being in the cult as I ever could be. <laughs> to where, to where uh, when I quit, I thought about contacting some old buddies of mine and getting a new social security number and a new name. <laughs> it, was to that, it was to that level. I almost put a call in I my still, uncle, my buddy, I, Uncle Junior out of Hayward. Man. Hey, hey, I, I need your services, buddy. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. I mean, I'm inactive with the page, but it's still up, and I still get likes every yeah. week. People, people stumble yeah. up because when they look up the Daily Courier on, on Facebook, <laughs> also Daily Courier Watch comes up, too, so I'm getting likes yeah. all the time. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So you put this together what you start advertising what you're when we talking about we were um we were late let's see where are we 2017 must have been late 2015 um 
Bob, the lead guitar Green player. And we had another okay. guitar player at the time. And, and we put a band together and started doing a blues jam. And, um, and then that kind of all fell apart. And then we, we reorganized. Yeah. Um, what was it? Early in 2000. And, what are we in 18 now? Early 18. in 18. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. So it was in 16 Time when we were. Yeah. yeah and, and it was early, yeah, early in knew. 2017 that we kind of formed, at least roughly in the form that we're in now. Who knew? My wife's on her way here to yeah. help me pick him up. Who knew she would be very surprised to find out that of four people sitting at a table, my memory's the best one here. Yeah. That is sad. Well, I don't, she, I don't know if that speaks for you or, uh, oh, or, no, or against us. It's definitely against you because my memory is shot. Yeah, man. So you oh, guys, yeah. you got, so it's you and a couple others, you mm-hmm. kind of went through a couple of yeah. evolutions. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then you start uh, start booking, instead of just running the jam, you start booking some other gigs and yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. And then you hooked up with Freddie right around that time. Yeah, uh-huh. And now, and- I've seen you guys at, uh, well, the now defunct Far From Folsom. It's soon to be Rickety Crickets. We're looking for them Woo! to open up right. soon. Um, over at the at the resort, at the at the mm-hmm. Nest, what do we call that? Eagle's Nest. Nest. Eagle's Nest Lounge. Yeah. Yeah, we're there twice a month. And, uh, and, uh... Final score. Yeah, I think was the last yeah, one. It's been a while. Think, yeah, you were there. And you tore that ago. place apart, man. Yeah. That was a blast. Yeah, was, we enjoyed that place yeah, a lot. That was great. Yeah. They um they backed out of the live music scene, but that's, that's uh, yeah. Right. It's a it, yeah. yeah. Uh, now I'm looking here. We've got I don't know where he went. Your drummer. Yeah, he's uh, it, well. You know, we're you in kind bet- of rotate we're in between drummers. Yeah. Right? We're you looking for rotate. a full time guy, so we're yeah. we're playing two or you three rotate. or four now, different ones. What was it? Was it Spinal Tap? Where the drummer kept blowing up and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> are you guys worried yeah, about that? Well, you know, that's honestly. why we have backup. I was you know? going to say, yeah. do, you guys, do you guys have? Yeah. Are, are we, the, we, are wear, lo- we wear protective gear. Our local drummers, <laughs> our local, our local drummers, a little skittish playing with you, wondering if they're going to make it to the next weekend gig. What? Nah, we're what looking, you, we're Bill, looking for a are you, time How are you? Tre- pick up that mic. Are you treating them bad? They keep running away, or no? No, you this, can't find a good backbone for. Uh, no, this, that's. We just have some really good drummers, yeah, and it just <laughs> makes some changes. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Who, who's sitting in with you guys tonight? Uh, we're Steve at, Nelson. By the way, we're at Mark's Beer Garden. Yes. Newly opened. Well, they've been right. open a couple months, I think. Yeah, I think uh, if that. Yeah. And I'm sorry, you have now. who's sitting in with you tonight? Uh, Steve Nelson. Yeah. Where's he playing? It's a real nice drummer. He, you place. know, he he plays with the Girly Girls. A lot. Okay. And, um, yeah, he's a good drummer. We like his drumming. Um, you know, we're trying to find somebody who's available most of the time, and we haven't found the one we like who's available yeah. primarily to us. We, so we're doing good with some really good drummers. Well, I was going to say, we have in this area, and we want to talk a little bit about, because you guys come from a pretty varied background, farther away, Southern Cal. You guys have done some traveling right. to different music towns and music uh, scenes, music regions. Absolutely. The Prescott area has so many good musicians, but a lot of them are already, like I said, taken up with other gigs, other oh, commitments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> compare, compare the Prescott music scene to what you've seen by traveling around. And, and why did you end up here? What brought you here? What brought me here? I loved it here. I mean, you know, it's just beautiful here. I love... I love it, the altitude, and when I I love so the he likes to get high. Square. Is that what you well, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah absolutely. High. Mile high show. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, when I got in downtown and saw all these great musicians down there, I went, "This is fantastic." When did you land here? When did you end uh, up here? About 2015. Okay, the, so it's only been a few years. Okay. Yeah. And w- was that from L.A.? Was that where you had last been planted? Yeah, uh, yeah. I came from L.A. And I moved, uh, we, my wife and I rented a house in Stone Ridge. Yeah. Guess who our next door neighbor was? Who's that? This drummer, Steve Nelson. Oh, nice. nice. Crazy, I huh? thought you were going to point to no, Kevin. But, I was but say, they didn't know And it. then you didn't run from the neighborhood? No. <laughs> <laughs> they no, wouldn't have let great. me in that neighborhood. And, uh, you know, and now uh, we built a house in Yavapai Hills. And oh, nice. It's nice. just beautiful up there. So yeah. with the music and the atmosphere of the town, the small town, you can't beat it. And now every Californian is coming to Prescott. Yeah. yeah. Yes, they are. We, we started a trend. I got here in 04 from Northern California. Yeah, yeah. Now, I was blown away because I, I have worked in uh, the, the mass comm field, primarily photojourn for decades uh, through the early 80s up. Right on. Uh, a good chunk of that was in the San Francisco Bay Area where I covered a lot of different music venues. I did a lot of work for uh, photography work for bands yeah. and comics and stuff. 
when I got here in 04, we kind of just, you know, we unpack a couple weeks in and we go, let's go. All right, we're going to go cruise through this whiskey row we keep hearing about. Obviously, the first place I see is Matt's Saloon. I got, I got my own bar. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we popped into a couple of places, uh, Coyote Joe's right. being one, Hooligans upstairs, right. but which is no longer there. But I'm watching these musicians play, and, I, and for one, I'm walking in. I didn't have to buy a ticket. Right. And I'm listening to these guys going, this is a ticketed show in the Bay Area. Yeah. And oh, then yeah. a couple weeks in, I stop in one Thursday. I finished a job out in Prescott, and it's Thursday night, and I hear music. I go into the birdcage, and it's Don Cheek's Thursday Night Jam. Okay. And I go, what band is I didn't know. I'm going, what band is this? These guys are great. And somebody goes, that's an open mic. They just show up. These are just... <laughs> You know, that guy's a carpenter. What one of the guys was out? He goes, he's a fireman. Yeah. I'm going. This is a ticketed show anyway. They go, oh no no no. This is just the music scene here. That's mm-hmm. fantastic. And I was blown away of yeah. the level of talent here. So yeah, finding I, a niche you can be tough. Both. It's it's rough. Yeah, yeah I, I've always called it a mini Austin. I think it's. I think the yeah. concentration of musicians to the population. It, it's clearly yeah. ranks in in scope to to Austin. In now, live music. Now, Bill, you've played, like we've said, you've played all over. You've played with some big names and, and quality musicians. I want to talk a little bit. We don't need to get into details now, but I want to talk about some of the groups you've played with here. Because, like I said, you have played with uh, some of the, the greats in this area. Yeah. Um, and in different genres. Yeah. What are some of the musical flavors that you played with? Because I've well, seen like classic I've... rock. You... Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, He's a bass player. Does not hold the mic. I've, I've jammed. I've jammed with a lot of the musicians. Yeah. Don Cheek. I've with the, with his group. I've real singer Little songwriter Larry. kind of thing. Yeah. Little Larry, more of a L- Little Larry in the drive. Classified Little Larry. Um, classic rock, and he throws in kind of some uh, and a lot of old and a lot of kind of old um, yeah. old. Um, yeah. R and B, soul stuff. Some old yeah, I worked with town. He's got all kinds of stuff going on. With him for two years. Yeah. Yeah. You've done some country western stuff. Yeah, yeah, I sure have. Um, if I'm not mistaken, were you? Did I see you playing some like surf rock and stuff with uh, Sky, with Sky and Daddy? The pop rock? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I've done that too. <laughs> What's the most obscure genre of music you played in? I was in a group, uh, a guy named Greg Ryder, and he had a group that was. F- f- uh, flamenco fusion. <laughs> that was yeah. he was a wonderful musician, but he played flamenco and we and I backed him up on bass. Oh man, drums. that was interesting. But he's, now he's in Florida. He does cruise ships, and I, it's a good gig, yeah. man. Free food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know the powers that be come down and tap you on the head with a magic wand and say you are only allowed to play. Blank. What kind of music are you going to play? You're limited oh. to one genre. What are you going to play? Poly blues. Yeah. Blues, rock, rock blues. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I like. That's where your blood is. That's yeah. where your, your heart is. I've been told that I play rock the best. I've been told that I, uh, the kind of, the kind of music that I like the best is soul. Yeah. I'm, I'm a soul, soul man. You know, I like playing. You know, I've been in black, black soul groups too, and I yeah. really enjoy doing that. Okay. You got a night off. You're not playing anywhere. You guys aren't booked anywhere. And you're going to go out and listen to music. Mm-hmm. Who around here are you going to see? Let's plug a local band. Who are you going to see? Uh, oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. There's so many. There's so yeah. many. There's so yeah. many good ones. Yeah. It's hard Come to on, say. Come on, give me one. You're not going to hurt anybody's feelings. Well, just because I played with him such a long time, probably Lil Larry. Yeah. I'll go yeah. see him because he's, he's an old friend of mine. And if you're a Jersey Lily, you get free popcorn. Woo! Yeah. That's yeah. a selling That's point true. for me. That's Freddie, true. blues, old R&B, yes, sir. classic, beautiful stuff. I've seen you rip up Ray Charles. Yeah, what yeah. else have you played? Or is that it? Is that the blood going through your veins? That's uh, that's what I grew up. The first great man I ever heard playing guitar was Leslie Earl Lyman. Uh, and uh, oh, is he here? <laughs> no, but he will be. Oh man! Oh, I thought. Well, you his talking. his hair arrives ten minutes before he does. <laughs> <laughs> is he here? He's coming. He's on. No, the way. Know, he's going to come in. Leslie Earl, not a serial killer. Lyman is what we like to call him. <laughs> you know, but uh, I love Ray Charles. Yeah. 
You but know? if you play, have you been in up bands that have done other genres? You know, to pay the bills, we all do. It's like if I never shoot another wedding, I'll be a happy man. But I've had to do them. I played, yeah, I played in a Rolling Stones tribute for a while. Ah, that's good music, you know, but though. That's good music. What have you had to? Have you had to? You know, when were you in a polka band? That's what I want to hear. Well, when, back when, in Minnesota, <laughs> yeah, at my wedding. Uh, <laughs> have you had to play a genre that you just do not enjoy, but you had to do it because no. you had to do it? No, no? I never did. Oh, beautiful! Played, then that's great. Played blues and rock and roll and and, and funk. You yeah, know? nice, nice. Yeah. So uh, you know. I was a songwriter in uh, Hollywood for 10 years, yeah. writing, you know, and I, most of the stuff we wrote was rhythm and blues and funk, you know. The Barquets recorded yeah. oh, nice. uh, Two Out to Stop, which was uh, opened the... Uh, was that one of yours? Yeah. Sing the, a little bit. Tell me. Go through a little bit. I've been had my eyes on you for a while. Girl, it's about the way you look, and I sure do love your style. <laughs> anyway, uh, you can do that tonight. No, Is that it? <laughs> we need horns to do that. But um, that was tell a, Kevin to get I off his horns. butt. Tell no. Kevin to get off his butt. <laughs> yeah, that was, <laughs> we limit yourself to the harmonica. What's no, that? No, tambourine. Can, Learn how to play a trumpet. Can do that was the opening song for uh, Super Bad, the movie. Ah, okay. Oh, I got to yeah. hear that. Now, we'll yeah. have to Next look that I do, up. So that was pretty cool. Uh, when we, uh, I was driving to a gig and I saw a big, a big uh, billboard with Super Bad on it, and I went, "Oh, this is a brand new movie coming out." My wife called me at the gig and said, "Hey, you just got a check." Ah, nice, the residuals. <laughs> went, nice. She goes, "It's for some movie called Super Bad," and I went, "Holy mackerel! I just saw those billboards." The billboard, yeah. that Judd Apatow. I think, so that was it? cool. You know. Nice, nice. All right, Kevin. Yeah. You have. Assembled and and worked with and gathered, as we've talked with here, some of the great, real talents in the Prescott area. I think so. Yeah. Now, you, hypothetically, again, those powers that be come yes. and tap you on the head with that that magic wand, and they said, "You got an evening at you know the beer garden, Mark's beer garden, right?" And, and there's, don't worry about the budget, right? Assemble the all-star blues band. Who you calling? Obviously, you got your core. You got Bill. You got Freddie. And I'm sorry, he just ran away. Bob. Bob Tenser. Bob, Bob Tenser. I'm you going with that. the guys we got. You got that. Absolutely. But they want to pack this out. You got you. Who You're else? Talking you about local guys. Yeah, local guys. Who you oh, calling? Well, we, of course, we got to get Leslie or Lyman up there. <laughs> and um, hey, boy, when it comes guy. down to the blues. You know, we'd probably call Chuck Hall up because he's a yeah. friend of the band. He's a, yeah, you know, he's yeah. an Arizona. And he could play Arizona every Blue, Oh, Arizona Blues Hall of Famer. And we'd certainly have him in there. And um, Who are you going to call? Who's your horn guy in the, in the area? You who know you know who I horns? like? Um, oh, darn. Now I'm drawing a blank. Um, I can't remember their names, the but young, Wes, no, the Wes Williams got a dynamite. When, when he assembles the full band... He's got a great brass section. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a guy that I like, and I'm just drawing a blank on his name now. Seriously, I'm just like, yeah. Um, But, yeah, we could put together quite a band. Who's banging the skins for you? Who's your drummer? (coughs) Well, you know. You're going to run two because you got your guy tonight, and he's coming back. You You know, know, we like like Dwight. Dwight, We do like Dwight. You know, and and if depending on the venue, um, Oh, we'd probably like. Um, I'm just drawing blank. Who's on that everybody's road name. one percussion guy too? That play, the, the, he plays the oh, offer. Yeah, offer, yeah, offer. We, yeah, we tried him out on the drums. Uh, um, we like him on no, the. Latin let him percussion. bring his congas in, but, man. That'd yeah, be yeah, great. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's right hard right to pick, man. There's yeah, too no, many there's great around one. here. No, yeah. I mean we could we could go with a whole. We could have a. We could have the whole yard packed up yeah. with great players. Yeah. All right, we're running out. You guys got right. to take the stage we here do. in just a few minutes. Right on. First, I want to thank you guys for sitting down again. Run hey, no through who the, run through the lineup again. Who do you got, Kevin? Okay, we got we got Bob Bob Tenser on lead guitar and vocals, Freddie Freeman, our front guy on uh, keyboards and vocals, Bill Ray is on bass tonight, Steve Nelson on the drums. Um, I'm Kevin the Harmonica Man Scable. Uh, Wailing away on the harp. Now, this won't go up for probably about six days. Yep. We're recording it right now, beautiful afternoon at Mark's Beer Garden in Prescott, right off of Iron Springs. Great spot. I need to come here more often. I love this place. But nice. So jump forward a couple of weeks. What do you guys got on, uh, on tap? Where can people see you? And better yet, where can folks find out about you and your upcoming shows? Well, they can get us on Facebook at Front Page. 
Um, we're the first and third Saturday of every month at the Prescott Resort Eagles Nest Lounge. That's pretty much nice. Pretty much in stone. Um, Boy, I don't know. We're going to be doing. We do a parking lot party at Barbudos on the thirtieth. Oh, I, you know what? Can, I saw that today. That. Yeah, yeah, those things are Where fun is that too. Where's place? That's over by in the Safeway and by Beijing Garden. Okay, gotcha, And they gotcha. close off the parking lot. And oh, nice. A ton nice. of people, and it's going to be a blast. Those That's things the are fun. Thirtieth. That's on the thirtieth. Saturday the thirtieth. Yeah, yeah. What six, time? Six to nine. Six o'clock. Don't forget. Yeah. Also, uh, and maybe you guys will just stop by to hang out June thirtieth from noon to five yeah, blues, at Watson Lake, the Northern Arizona Blues Alliance Blues <laughs> Festival. At Watson Lake, awesome. Three bucks to get into the park for parking because that's a city deal. No right. charge up in the pavilion for the uh, for the Blues Fest. A lot of great great things going on then. Unofficial then go- unofficial after party at Barbuda. Uh, yeah, there you and go. And you guys that night. That is rodeo weekend, so there's going to be a yeah. ton of stuff It'll happening. Be a blast, yeah. So best bet out there, guys. Call a cab, call Uber, call Lyft. Yes. You don't have to mess with parking. You don't have to mess with figuring out who's going to drive home. That's right. You guys, everybody, come out, enjoy yourselves. Good friend of the show, not to steal from you guys, because you guys might be done by then. Danny Romero and Arizona Territory uh, Trio will be playing at the Palace that same night, starting at 9 p.m., mm-hmm. and they're going to run till late. So, nice. so you can run hit some great music all day long. And then, Kevin, we're going to get a chance to see you Labor Day weekend, September 1, at Northern Arizona Blues Alliance. Harmonica Bash at Goldwater Lake, Correct. right? Yeah, a bunch of great harmonica yeah. players. Yeah. You guys going to be hanging out there <laughs> oh, as well? Yeah, good, absolutely. good. All right, Front Page Blues on Facebook. There will be a link in the show notes. Guys, thank you so much for sitting down. We're going to get a couple of uh, cuts uh, on tape. On, on tape. It's showing my age here. On my 8-track. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when you guys start playing, uh, we'll use those for the bumpers pre and, pre and out. Nice. Thank you to the good folks at Mark's Beer Garden for letting us take up space. And uh, thank thanks you, for Matt. tuning in, guys. Thanks, thank you, Matt. Guys. Matt, good friend of the yeah, good friend of the local so entertainment community. Well, that was it. That was our show, one seventy seven. We hope you enjoyed it. That was the good guys from uh, Front Page Blues. Don't forget this Saturday, June thirtieth, at Watson Lake in Prescott, Arizona, twelve noon, the Northern Arizona Blues Alliance. First uh, ever blues festival at Watson Lake, twelve noon, free. Uh, festival. There is a parking fee charged by the city of Prescott. Sorry about that. It is three dollars. But come on, load up your car, have a lot of fun. Christian uh, Barry, Scott O'Neill, and several other blues bands uh, from the area are going to be taking the stage and having a good time. Check out uh, Front Page Blues at the Eagles Nest Lounge at the Prescott Resort, Yavapai Casino, a couple times a month. Follow them on Facebook. Follow Mark's Beer Garden so you know who's playing out there on the patio. And please, 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 please use that Amazon link at milehighshow.com where you can get all your online shopping done. doesn't cost you anything extra, but it lets Amazon know you got to them through us, and they give us a little kickback at the end of the month. MileHighShow.com. Use that Amazon link. Shop away and, uh, and help, support, help support me, I guess. The more you use that link, the less likely it is that I will come to your house and try and borrow money. So if you don't want me knocking on your door asking to borrow gas money, Use that Amazon link. It's for your own good and for the peace and quiet of your family. Because I knock really loud. Skangle there. Come on, Bob.